Hello everyone, and welcome to my Days of Our Lives 24 channel. I hope everyone is having a wonderful day. Before we begin, please hit the subscribe button and give this video a thumbs up. Marlena and EJ gain new customers. Eric entered the Brady pub feeling defeated. Roman commented that he didn't even need to ask Eric how he was doing as he approached the bar. Roman was updated by Eric on the lack of new leads in the Sloan search. Sloan's claim that he could have gotten the jump on EJ was rejected by Roman. Eric agreed that it had been shocking to see EJ unconscious on the ground, but he thought Sloan's desperation was the reason she was able to get away. Roman attempted to console Eric regarding Jude's death. Eric admitted that he had never experienced greater pain before. Eric continued to talk about feeling like Jude was still his son as his emotions mounted. Roman promised Eric that they would persevere through the adversity together as a family, as they had always done. Eric said thanks to Roman and said he expected to get back home. Roman contemplated whether Eric staying at the condo alone was just compounding the situation. He recommended Eric offer himself a reprieve and move once more into the loft over the bar. After considering it, Eric agreed. At the point when Roman inquired as to whether Eric required help moving, Eric guaranteed his dad had given him a thought, and Eric left with a reason. EJ happily read to Jude from a newspaper article about Paulina's problems at the De Mara mansion. EJ speculated that the narrative would conclude with either Paulina stepping down as mayor or being forcefully removed. Is that so? Chanel inquired upon entering the room after hearing EJ's conversation. While scowling, Chanel scorned EJ for enjoying her mom's torment. EJ asserted he was shocked for Chanel's benefit, since Paulina's activities had endangered Chanel's unborn youngster. Paulina's actions were defended by Chanel as those of a concerned mother, despite Chanel's admission that she was upset. EJ was still of the opinion that Paulina should be held accountable. Chanel said that EJ wanted to get revenge on him for firing him rather than get justice for her. EJ insisted that he was only concerned about Chanel and Johnny. EJ mentioned the options available in the event that the results should reveal anything negative when Chanel mentioned her doctor's appointment. Chanel became increasingly agitated and made it abundantly clear to EJ that she would have the child regardless of anything. After taking a step back, EJ reassured Chanel that Jude and he were looking forward to welcoming a new member of the family. EJ's expression hardened when Chanel made a joking comment about Uncle Jude. He confirmed that the boy's name would likely be changed. Chanel saw yet felt frustrated about Eric. EJ reminded her it possessed been an intense energy for every one of them, however Jude was where he should have been. Later, EJ talked to Jude by himself. He was concerned that he had begun to protest excessively that Jude was his son. Jude was EJ's son now and forever, and that was all he wanted the world to know. He admitted that he would probably lose both Nicole and Jude if she ever discovered the truth, but he reassured himself that his secrets were safe. All at once, Eric went into the room. EJ made a movement for Eric to keep calm since Jude had nodded off. Eric said he wouldn't be long. He had come to inquire about EJ's assistance with Sloane's divorce proceedings. EJ asked why Eric hadn't searched out his sister or Justin for help, yet Eric accepted they previously had a great deal for they to handle. In addition, EJ would be an ardent advocate for Eric because he disliked Sloane as much as Eric did. EJ recognized that the circumstance had made him and Eric odd partners, and EJ appeared to be open to going about as Eric's legal advisor. Eric inquired as to whether Sloan would should be situated before separate from procedures could start. EJ claimed to have a solution. He made sense of the idea of a distribution separate to Eric. If Eric posted a notice in the newspaper every week for a few weeks in good faith to find Sloan, the divorce could likely proceed in due time. Eric acknowledged that he was uncertain about EJ's willingness to assist and thanked him for his assistance. EJ accepted they were undeniably qualified for a new beginning, and Eric, with a yearning look at Jude, concurred. EJ received a call from Rita while he was later alone with Jude. When Rita informed him that the recall petition had been presented to the city council, he was pleased. When Paulina yelled in her sleep at Abe and Paulina's apartment, Abe rushed over to her. Paulina shared that she had a nightmare in which the radiation made her 50 feet tall, rampaging through the streets of Salem, and destroyed sweet bits. 
Paulina likewise admitted to a stunned Abe that she'd had the fantasy essentially consistently. Abe recommended that they speak with Marlena. Paulina thought Marlena was the best person in the world, but she didn't think Dr. Freud to comprehend why she had been destroying the town and her daughter in her dreams. Abe speculated that Paulina actually felt huge culpability, and he attempted to alleviate it. Paulina was reminded by him that Chanel and she had been through difficult times before. Paulina concurred, but she expressed doubt that she would ever be able to forgive herself if Chanel or the baby were to be harmed. They were interrupted by a call for Abe, who was conversing with a man named Reuben and seemed concerned. Abe attempted to reassure Paulina that the call was unimportant after hanging up. Paulina demanded Abe reveal the truth. He admitted, sighing, that Reuben was a member of the city council who had called to inform Abe of a petition to remove Paulina from her position as mayor. Paulina was appalled, especially when Abe informed her that the petition had received sufficient signatures to be submitted to the city council. She was curious about the identity of the rats behind the effort. Concerned Citizens of Salem, or CCS, was Abe's nickname for them. Paulina promised to find out who the members of the organization were. Abe made a few calls to begin the investigation. He received a text message shortly thereafter revealing the primary petitioner's identity. Paulina said, I should have known, looking at the screen once. Eric went back to the pub and thanked Roman once more for assisting him in moving on. Eric said he could make another motion and slid off his wedding band. He told Roman that he had earlier seen Jude. Eric said that each time he saw the kid, he felt as though he were losing Jude once more. Roman gave his son a hug. Leo grinned at a newspaper headline that read, Paying Price for Radioactive Ride in Horton Town Square. Leo quipped about the paper's return to sharp writing. Somebody intruded on his snideness and requested some help. Leo was about to say that he didn't do favors, but when he looked up and saw a man sweating profusely and without a shirt, he beamed and asked how he could help. Leo began to flirt with the man, telling him that despite the fact that he normally wouldn't do certain things with a stranger, he would be willing to make an exception for the man. The man requested Leo's glass of water, which Leo in the long run surrendered. As the man poured some of the water on his chest, Leo smiled as he watched. The man thanked Leo and got ready to keep going. Leo came to a stop and asked the man if he wanted to go somewhere. Leo went on and on about the breakup he just had and said that he was single and ready to twinkle. The man responded with a smile that, despite his gratitude, he was not gay. Thanks for watching if you like this video, so please don't forget to subscribe my channel and don't miss any update.